Hello everyone. Just thought I'd do an update. So, well, not really anything new. There's going to be a few new things, but just stuff I've been working on. Well, actually, quite a lot of stuff that I've been working on. I don't recall if I started this because actually I've been posting more videos of real trains than anything else. Except for the one video of 6060 since she's now been DCC'd, running with 4449, who's finally been out of her overhaul. The only new stuff that I bought brand, well not brand new, but they are pretty much new. Proto 1000 F unit. And two Canadian National Customly Done Athern PAs. It's an AA set. $60 for all three. For three powered locomotives, pretty good. Randomly showed up my, at my local hobby shop and at my work. President's Choice Yard Bull 080 CN showed up, which is not a bad thing. But now, the main thing I want to do with this video are all these on the ground. I'll explain a bit. These are all projects, things I'm working on, and I'm going to start with the one that I did for a friend. I just actually, I think I really have to just mail this. It looks like a normal FP45. But considering this project I've been working on, my wide-bodied Athern SD40-2, it is powered and it's sitting on a normal SD40-2 frame. Oh, come on. There we go. And to show how the difference, you notice side by side, quite a lot shorter. It's been cut down out of a normal FB45 shell. My 484 Canadian National project originally would have had this little tender which is an oil burner which I'm probably going to reuse this on a Southern Pacific project I'm going to do at some point. Or for a 482 that I'm working on. Actually, I'll show it in case I haven't done it on YouTube. A club member bought this Athen Genesis SP482 and it rolled off his layout. The tender, the only part I got out of the tender is this part off the back. And I'm debating because I went out and found this brass tender but I think it's this is more of a Great Northern style Vanderbilt. This looks more like an SP style so I think I might end up going with this for that. But slowly but surely I've been rebuilding this to put it back together since that's my speciality. Well I found at a show this massive coal six axle Vanderbilt. I put a new bell on. I and the steam generator. Got to be careful that brass piece is bending. And I don't want it to break off. I've got a steam whistle in another box. I'm going to install at some point. Now then, another odd thing that showed up in the local hobby shop. This little, mm, I'd say, it's mixed between either an electric or a streetcar. But I think it was supposed to be a streetcar. Because this is what it came with, it was this trolley pentagraph. But it also came with two of these, and I'm going to swap it out to have two of those on the roof and turn it into uh, my version of a Penzi box cab. Now then, on to my projects. I'll do these two at the same time because the unit front needs some work still. PA, back, and frame. Powered six axle Athen PA frame. And the other half of those two shells are here. Here's the back half of that E unit and the front half of the PA on an E unit. I believe it's an E7 frame, but there's no motor. Still have a lot to work to do. And I'm not completely happy with how this turned out 
my Southern Pacific Hudson design. It's not sitting right. There's terrible cut lines there. I'm trying to put the shell back there, but for my first attempt of piecing together a, a steam body shell, I'd say it came pretty good. And then here's my version of that. It's on an SD9 Athen frame. And to even show the difference here, putting them um, nose to nose, it's a little bit shorter because this is going to be fitting on a four axle frame. And that was a fluke. I didn't mean for that to happen when I made the first one. Because I made this one first. And then I made that one realizing I made a bit of a cock up on it by making it a little long. Now then, one that I just tweaked a little this morning. SW1200 frame, cab, and F unit back. I put some body filler, fill those, sanded down that horn or that uh, vent there. Came out not that bad. It's a dummy at the moment, but I gotta get the handrails and find some power chassis. So I've been doing a lot of work with switchers. SW1000 and for me a CSX, I believe it was a Dash 9. And it's sitting on an Atherin frame. Also another dummy. These two were trial and errors. I really don't know why I put that on there. I really can't tell you. But I did. Four axle. This one was a complete mess up, as you can see by the front how it is. Because this was an Atherin. I think it was more like an MP15 than anything. And there's most of the strength is in this bottom piece that hold under the cab. And when I cut it off to put this part on, the bottom of this cab, all the strength in the frame disappeared. So it's not sitting well. And because of that, I was making this. When I took the original VIA cab off, since it was a via engine in progress. I accidentally while a friend sat it on this frame or this shell that that cab came off of. I just sat it there but it didn't have that bottom part there it just was the cabs which I made longer. Just something for fun and apparently there's an engine I think in Australia or somewhere that sort of is like this. It has this type of front and that type of back. I'm not sure if it's a Dash 9 or an AC4400. But now for the little critter I'm working on. Two cabs off of two different Jeeps. And the back's in the middle of an FP45 for its B unit. I have yet to find any chassis. They're just shells with a little filler piece in the middle. And the one I'm right now the most proud with and stunk a lot of time into is this little guy. Nice big plow on the front, handrails all the way around, horn, dual exhaust, although I've been told to possibly get rid of that. And now since I have the putty, I can take that off and fill in the hole that was the exhaust. These were steps out of the GMD1 kit I have. Because of how they got the kit got made, I didn't use them, so I trimmed them down low to make them fit there. I got the spark arresters, even though they're not sitting exactly straight, but that's okay. Number boards, bell. And yes, I know I put that on up upside down, but since this is a what-if engine, I don't think it really matters. The more I look at this, 
this was made to order for somebody, but the more I look at it, the more I think it might just end up, sorry to say, staying with me. And he'll get that one probably. I don't want to be rude, but I'm really starting to like this one that I've also, because I've put a lot of time in it and it is powered and all that. Anyways. Other than that, hmm. Nothing's really changed here. Picked up some more rolling stock here and there. And there is, right, well, right now I'm going to try to hold off on buying things because there is a locomotive I've been meaning to get for a while and now it's gone up in value. Or looks like, seems like it. So I'm going to try to get it before they disappear. And I'm not going to mention anything about it because... It only comes in a kit form, and it looks like it might be a fun kit. And I'll take a photo of it in bag form before I even try to build it, to see if anybody can guess what I'm building. And then I'll have a special photo of it when it's built with another engine that's a bigger version of it that I do have. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Ask questions about any of these if there's scratching your head about it because frankly with some of them even I'm scratching my head and I built them that frankly pretty much just I had this part I had that part I had a frame piece them together put them on a frame way I went anyways thank you and goodbye